classroom today analyzing a photograph. Um, interesting one. Um, not too difficult to figure out what's going on. No. Um, you know, you have a, a particular object with four wheels here. They, you know, they're definitely putting a, together a car, but it's, uh, it's the how they're putting it together and the why and, and really the big picture in terms of savings, I yes. guess you could say, with this. Historical context, Industrial Revolution. We now have cars. Latter part yep. of the Industrial Revolution. We are in the 19 teens. We just said 1913, 1914. Yeah, 1914. Henry Ford's moving assembly line, Detroit, Michigan. And if you look, you know, again, in terms of historical context, you know, if you didn't hit the date right on the head, like 1913, 1914, you're not talking about automobiles. So you're definitely within the 1900s. Yes. And what are they doing right here? You know, I see a lot of people here and you have a line going this way. Yep. And in particular, what they're doing here, and this is something that Henry Ford kind of revolutionized. He didn't invent the car, but what he wound up doing was revolutionizing how it was uh, put together. And he was doing that by having people work on an assembly line. Moving assembly moving line. Assembly line. Workers stay in one spot. The product moves along a moving conveyor belt, <clears throat> and your job might be put the wheel on. Next car comes along, you put the wheel on, and the person next to you, they're the ones screwing the, the lug nuts in. Everyone had a specified job of to do, and you are revolutionizing mass production. You don't have to put a lot of training into these nope. people as well. Um, I would imagine putting together an automobile. You know, if it was just two people, would require a, a lot of experience a lot of uh, knowledge on the internal workings of, of a car. Well, meanwhile- I'm sure we've all put together something from Ikea using the little Allen key, trying to follow the directions and you get frustrated. But if you had right. hundreds of people who had one job to one do, job. your job come in, put this in, and say, okay, boom. You're going to be able to mass produce Those your IKEA IKEA directions. Have exactly. made me look stupid your so many Allen times. Key. You know, all I have to do is teach this guy how to just put a tire on. That's yep. it. And you teach the next guy on how put to put the wiper it. blades That's on. It. Put the put the, the car horn or the engine, whatever your job would be. Now, I, I guess the big thing here is that now, what does this do to the cost of the automobile then? Well, I mean, before we get to that we're now mass producing. You're, you're Henry Ford, you're going from producing like one or two cars a day to 30 or 40 cars, finished products a day. Well, you know, you get into the law of supply and demand. If the supply becomes really, really high, the demand for that goes down. Therefore, the price goes down. So you are now talking, the automobile went from thousands of dollars, which doesn't seem like a lot to no. us in 2022, went from thousands of dollars down to hundreds of dollars. Sure, I mean, I've seen advertisements, 250, yep. $650 yep. Um, from this time period. You know, so the, the middle class, because we are at this time period outside information, the middle class is really being born out of the labor movement. Henry Ford does pay his workers extremely well because he wants to keep them on the job. And he wanted them to be able to afford to pay for the car yep. as well. So, you know, because they're, basically making your own money back. Right, what exactly. What you're, paying your, what you're paying your employees. So, you know, mass production, um, faster, easier, cheaper, even safer. You know, if you have one job to do and you become really good at that one job, you're not gonna make a mistake. I mean, that, those things that you brought up there, the faster, the easier, the much more efficient, those are things that you hear in the eighth grade curriculum throughout the year. Mm -hmm. You know, probably going back to, you know, transcontinental railroad. Railroad. Faster, efficient, uh, much more cheaper. Best uh, safer, process. You know, the best process as well. You're going to see that and hear of that a lot because as the technology advances, as businessmen become smarter when you're looking at assembly lines, this is what the concern is. Faster, easier, much more efficient, which also helps with, you know, the price as well. There are going to be a lot of other businesses that follow this model mm -hmm. of mass producing things yep. because if you're able to produce a lot in one particular day, more people will be able to afford it. That's going to bring the price down as well. Yeah, like it's almost counterintuitive. It's like, well, if the price goes down, my, my company's making less money, but you're not because right. you're selling, selling a lot more. more. Yeah. You know, there's the handmade, takes a long time. Handmade, handmade products are always more expensive. Sure. Where, where mass produced products are much cheaper. You know, it is weighing, you spell, sell one or two handmade products, you're going to make money, but right. to sell them, who's going to want to buy them? Right. All right, okay. cool. Like we got everything with the hippo, right? Oh, we're good. Historical context, intended audience. Uh, where would, might we see this? It's a good question. Yeah. I mean, newspapers, yeah. um, maybe as an advertisement for to to buy the, the machine, uh, the, the car, maybe as a um, a brochure to try to recruit people sure. to come and work in Detroit. Yep, perfect. Um, really, no no intended audience or purpose. Right, I mean, it's, that's kind of tough. Photograph. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, but it is. We are hitting the other parts of the hippo. All right, cool. Thanks for watching.